What an absolute thrill to be joined by the two stars of Wicked, your Alphaba, your Glinda, Cynthia Revo, Ariana Grande. Welcome to the UK. I mean, there's no place like home, right? No place like home. Now, you guys film this in London and you are here for the final stop of your Wicked World Tour. Um, how are you guys just feeling? Is this a full circle moment being back in the UK? Uh, yeah, it's definitely a full circle moment for, for both of us. We spent so long filming here and obviously this is home for me. So being able to bring it back like this is really, really wonderful. Yeah. Right on. It feels like my second home just for being here for so long and I love it so, so much. And I'm just so grateful. It's really full circle. It's yeah. so overwhelming, and the fans are so beautiful. You guys too. are amazing. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. So grateful. They are dedicated. Um, Cynthia, it would be remiss of me not to talk to you about defying gravity. Yeah. I mean, that battle cry. How did you prepare for, for that moment? Because watching Ariana <laughs> as Linda, watching you do it, was just, it was heartbreaking and beautiful. How did it Thank feel to, to finally reach that moment? I mean, it felt really, really wonderful. So that was a really full, full circle moment for me because it was the end of the shoot, it's the last thing we did. Um, and I'm really proud of what we got that got to, and I was given sort of the space to make it my own. So I'm glad that uh, you loved it, and hopefully everyone else will. Oh, trust me, we love it, and then some. Ariane, I need to talk to you about No One Mourns the Wicked. How, <laughs> how did you prepare for a vocal like that as well? Because I mean, look, you two, just the singing, the, the way you blend, like the vocal production, like the levels are beyond. How did you prepare for that performance? Thank you so much, I mean, I, um, for, for No One Mourns the Wicked in particular, I, I worked a, for a long time with my vocal coach, Eric Vitro, to sort of transform my voice to be able to sing the sort of coloratura soprano, because it's a very different placement than what I usually sing, so it was, uh, it was hard work, but I'm so grateful that I got to do it. Trust me, it paid off. I wish I could talk to you guys all night, but you are very busy witches. There is a lot of wicked business to get into, but honestly, women, congratulations on what you have done. Thank it is you, truly incredible, and trust me, we will all be changed for good. Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> well, 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 if it isn't the Winky Prince. Hello, everyone. Yeah, uh, Jonathan Bailey, welcome. Welcome home. It's lovely to see you, Clark. I know there is no place like there home. There is no place like home. Okay, this guy is hilarious. I mean, look, on one level, he's vain. He's the hot boy that everybody wants, but there's so much more to Fiero than meets the eye, right? Yeah, I think so. I think he's really complicated. You know, I think there's a lot of nuance, and I think John M. Chu, who is the director of this film, is the sort of directorial feat to this, and it's so incredible, and partly because he's, uh, he wanted to explore the characters in multi-layers, sort of multifaceted ways and uh, yeah there's a lot to, to Mr Winky. Yeah. There is a lot to the Winky Prince and um, you get to be delightfully playful but also so sensitive in this role. Let's talk about the playful moments, dancing through life, that number. Um, changed you for good, no pun intended? Yeah in the way that I can't really walk straight. <laughs> no no it was amazing, yeah Chris Scott's here who's the incredible, I just said hello to him, uh, he's an amazing choreographer um, and part of the joy of doing something like this is the discipline and the work that you put into it and uh, yeah I, I danced when I was about five six years old and so I it was when I watched it I suddenly was overcome emo with emotion and I realized it's sort of full circle um, but yeah there's nothing better than uh, dancing that choreography with 300 professionals around you making you look amazing and uh, and uh, and singing at the same time so yeah it's a bit of a dream come true oh you held it down trust me now and speaking of dreams come true you got to witness the talent that is Cynthia Revo and Ariana Grande in real time how did that push you as a performer watching those two well it was just kind of magical and I think their performances are of you know instant sort of iconic classic cinema performances they're very very special very talented and the one thing that I think would be easy to sort of not realise is just how much work they put in on top of their talent and uh, once you see Cynthia Revo singing Full Belt flying upside down in a gyro <laughs> Um, you, you, you can believe that anything can happen for you. Right on. Jonathan, thank you so much for joining us. Our Winky Fritz, the one and only Fiero, Jonathan Bailey. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Jeff Goldblum. Clara. I feel like you always have a song in you. Have a little drink. How do you know that? Oh, you're a fan of Wicked. I am a fan of Wicked. Like, you are a fan of Wicked. So, yes. Jeff, talk to me about your connection to this film. The first time or you even saw it on Broadway or heard rumors about it, about Wicked. Well, I heard rumors and then I saw it early on. Uh, and I saw Dina Menzel and Kristen Chenoweth. Oh my gosh! So I, you saw the OGs. I sure did. And Joel Gray, 
uh, whom I adore, playing this part, you know, and I cried my eyes out at that. I didn't know what it was about. I hadn't read the Gregory Maguire brilliant book, but I've been a fan of that ever since. And when they asked me to do it, can you imagine? Uh, oh my gosh, and then with John Chu, who makes a musical into a movie better than anybody has ever done it, I think. I, dare I say that? And then Cynthia Erivo and Ariana Grande, uh, the two of the greats of all time, virtuoso performances. I was right there, as close as I am to you, Clara, and they were doing it. I, I, I pinched myself. I thought I was dreaming, just like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. I kept clicking my heels. Well, three times you've clicked them and you're right here back home in the UK where you guys filmed it. It's so perfect. Have you ever been there to Sky, Elstree Studios? They are fantastic. Fantastic. And this whole filmmaking crew was fantastic and the cast. Jeez, what a lucky thing. Honestly, I think when it was announced that you were cast as a wizard, it was such a no-brainer. I think the, the world over was like, yeah, okay, cool, that checks out, that makes sense. When you first put on your wizard outfit, you know, on that day in set, how, how, how did that make you feel stepping into that? Well, fantastic, you're talking about these costumes mm. and Paul Taswell comes to mind. Wait till you see him tonight, he's decked out, he's here. What a great man he is. And I'll tell you, more than, I've done a bunch of movies, but I've never put on a costume. He had been there for many Many, many fittings and been his elegant, brilliant, quiet self. But when I finally put it on, after he'd you know, cared for every detail, I teared up. I got choked up and I said to him, thank you, Paul, thank, thank you. That's how I felt. And, you know, honored to be in the continuum of people who have played this part and the material that uh, is just uh, fantastic. Well, I know you've loved this story, like, since you were a little boy. I mean, it must have been so fun for you to, I guess, to tap back into that childhood imagination to play the wizard, right? Oh, my gosh. Not only fun, it was like I felt 10 years old again. I was jumping out of my skin. Yeah, I was really happy. Obviously, the smile on your face is so wide, Jeff. And last but not least, I'm asking all the cast tonight, you know, to, to quote Stephen Schwartz and his incredible composing and lyricism, how has this experience changed you for good? That's a good question. Like the song says as if it was an imprint on my heart. The whole shape of my soul has been transmogrified for the better. It's true. And there are some interesting, profound, and dark um, uh, elements in the wizard's character that are worth looking at. You know, to what extent do any of us, and me, uh, from the inside out playing this part, to what extent do I put on some kind of mask and protect my real self? Am I authentic? And to what extent am I, am I giving um, good things to the people around me, you know, and not just demonizing others to seize and enhance power? Uh, to what extent am I good to animals? Do I, am I involved, do I participate in any kind of animal cruelty? Hey, those are good questions, and can, seriously considering them can change you for good. But then hearing the music of Stephen Schwartz come out of the mouths and throats and bodies of Cynthia Erivo and Ariana Grande, that'll change you uh, immediately and forever. And we cannot wait for audiences to experience everything that you just explained to us so beautifully. I can't wait. I can't wait. Your wizard, everybody, Jeff Goldblum. Thank you Thank so you much. much. Thank, Thank you. <laughs> Let me tell you something, when Michelle Yeoh speaks, we can't help but listen to every single word. The epitome of elegance as Madame Morrible. Um, you, Michelle, you've had an incredible relationship with John and Chu. You've worked together before. When he called you to say, hey, I want you to be in this movie, was it just an instant yes? You know, John can throw the phone book at me and I'd say yes. <laughs> I love this young man. I think he's one of the most brilliant, amazing storyteller. And when he called, I did say to him, John, you realize this is a musical and I don't sing, right? <laughs> but he had confidence in me and I was up for the challenge. And so here I am as Madame Horrible. Singing alongside Cynthia Erivo. Incredible work. <laughs> I, I must say, Cynthia, because uh, my first song is with Cynthia. And, you know, when I, and they sing live. So we're singing live. And I, I was going like, <laughs> yeah, I was, I was being like, oh, this is so embarrassing. And Cynthia just took me by the hand and go, I know you can do this. I've heard you do this. So come on, just sing. And I'm Cynthia sad. Arrivo asks you to do that. That's what you do. That's what you now, in between filming, you won your Oscar, which is so incredible. What was it like bringing that energy to the, to the incredible set at Shiz? Oh, I must say, during the 
because January, February, March, leading up to that, I was flying between Los Angeles, New York, Santa Barbara, you know, America and London and filming Wicked. But being in Wicked grounded me so much. It gave me so much love and encouraged nurture. And I was nourished because when you're on the Oscar, what we call the Oscar campaign, it is very discombobulating. You're not sure what you're... <laughs> <laughs> Hello. I love you, Michelle. <laughs> and so every time I came back on the set, it was like, I'm with my love girls. So when I brought the Oscar back, John and Mark had organized that I walk onto set where they have the, the, the Oz Fest, you know, the mm. dance. And we were up those stairs and John was right on the top of the stairs and I walked in with my Oscar. It was wild. And you know when they say jumping for joy, that was what John M. Chu was doing. He was like, ding, 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 ding. I was like, please don't fall off the stage. And they had done this big cake. So it was such a welcome. It was a uh, love. Well, that's the great thing. I mean, seeing all of the cast together, you guys really are a family. Uh, what would you say were some of the best moments of filming that, that truly bonded you? Uh, just being together. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're on set, it's just because we all know the character so well, we know what we are doing. So when uh, we're not shooting, they break into song and dance. So it's so easy. I just sit back and watch this like show going on the whole time. And it's a really, truly loving set. So it's wonderful. And I have to ask, you know, Madame Morrible is somebody with such great power and she's the one that sees that in, in, in Elphaba. Did you, did you feel that, that difference in switch when you were acting with Cynthia? Yes, yes. And I think a lot of the emotions that you see between us are very real. And I think, as anybody knows, the center, the camera magnifies any emotion threefold, fourfold. So whatever you see is true. Well, we cannot wait to see your magic in action. Michelle Yeo, as Madame Morival, it was incredible to meet you. <laughs> and enjoy the film. Wicked, incoming. <laughs> The man behind it all, director of Wicked, John M. Chu. Hey, hi Welcome everybody. Welcome back yes. to the UK where this experience all began. And also, can we just note the elf of the glasses? Get into it. Do you like it? Get into Thank it. Thank you. John, what an incredible way to add to the lore of Oz. I mean, talk to me about how this journey began for you personally. Well, first of all, Wizard of Oz has a huge place in my heart, the Yellow Brick Road, the wizard um, for my family. And then when I saw Wicked for the first time, I saw it before it went to Broadway, when it was in San Francisco, and I fell in love with it. And I thought, wow, this director, whoever does this for a movie one day is going to be very, very lucky. I didn't know 20 something years later, I would be the guy. So uh, yes, I feel blessed. It ended up being, and also a side note, you mentioned family. Congratulations for the latest edition to the Tuniverse. Yes, this is my first premiere that I get to attend because the other premiere, I had a baby. So uh, I missed it. So this is my one and only uh, per and it makes sense to be here back in London where we shot the movie, where all the lovely people who put their hands and built these cities from Emerald City to Munchkinland live here and built this from the ground up. So it's home court. It is honestly such a, it is a spectacle to behold the world yes. that you guys created. Can you talk to me about those first planning stages from its inception to seeing it in, in real life? Yeah, I mean, it, it was exhausting. <laughs> We, we just, we, we, but we got the team together. We have a great team um, and we all got in and we started collecting images and putting them on the walls and talking about the emotions and what we felt about Oz and how real we wanted to feel it. We wanted to feel that you could touch the ground and touch the buildings and build things from the train to the head itself. Um, and that's where we started and we sort of kept going from there, I guess. So. You took it to the moon, truly. Um, I got to talk to you about Cynthia and Ariana, this incredible duo. Yeah. Um, it must have been an absolute blessing just to see them in their element every day. Every day we would cry, grown men would be singing popular on their way back to their car. Um, it, was, it was truly a blessing and they were singing live, so we would all stare in awe. Sometimes I would forget to call cut because that's how beautiful uh, they would do this. And it's not just about their singing. Of course we know they can sing. It was their acting and how they became these characters. And I think it's really important uh, for that energy to, for this audience out there right now in the world, the empowerment that Cynthia gives in defying gravity. Um, and, 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 and so both of them are just, will break your hearts and I'm so excited for people to see the movie. Well, here's to empowerment, here's to us getting our yes. hearts broken and here is to Wicked, John M. Chu. Yes. Thank you thank so you much for this incredible film. Thanks, and it's only part one. <laughs> and the crowd is 
going wild. Ethan Slater taking on the role of Bok in Wicked. Does that even feel surreal just to hear that? Yeah, it's a, oh, thank you. I love you guys too. Oh my God. I hope you're staying warm. We're trying our best. Yeah. Um, let's talk about big theatre kid energy, because I don't know about you, it, I feel like it fuels this movement. What does that mean to you as a, as a theatre kid? I mean, Wicked is such a like huge part of, I mean, the theatre world and theatre kids' lives, and it's what made me a theatre kid. It's one of the things that I saw when I was in sixth grade and I fell in love with Wicked. So to be a part of something like this, and to be making it with so many theatre kids was a really special thing. Well, that's the thing. And also, it's lovely to see all of you guys realise your dreams because I know you tried out to be Bok for the Broadway version, right? Yeah. And th that didn't work out, but now look. <laughs> I know. It's, I, I feel like I needed, to, I needed to learn some things. Also, in my audition, I was remembering that I kept on saying Munchkin Town because I was nervous. So I think I needed to learn how to uh, get control of that. Munchkin Land. Munchkin Land. I've, where, le I've learned now. Is where Bok Woodsman is definitely from. Yeah. Um, talk to me about the first day you stepped onto Munchkin Land. You know, this dream realized by Don M. Chu. I, it was absolutely surreal. I mean, what was surreal about it is that it actually felt like stepping into the world of Oz. And uh, I remember we were, I, I can't remember exactly where we were shooting, maybe it was at the train station, but I knew I needed to see Munchkin Land, so I like snuck over, because it was like only, you know, 100 meters away or wherever. And um, finding the yellow brick road and seeing these beautiful houses that you could like walk into and they were homes. It was just, a, it was like an unbelievable thing. And it made playing a Munchkin pretty, Easy. Well, that's it. You had an actual, literal, like, playground rather than just, like, 100% CGI. Yeah, we had books that had, like, fully written chapters in them about how to fell a tree with an axe, you know? <laughs> and were you, uh, you know, putting in the work? Uh, were you doing the actual woodsman's work? Are you that method? Oh, yeah. We, we, uh, we, did some, we did some wood shopping. We built the fires to keep everyone warm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, with this character, I mean, look, we're going to see, like, as, as the film series progresses, he has a change, he has a switch. Yeah. But um, talking about playing him before the big transition, how was it, I guess, getting to this version of Bach and making him your own? What I love about Bach is that he's somebody who he comes to Shiz looking for community. He comes to Shiz maybe looking for love. And uh, he finds community through his search for love. And I, I think that's a really beautiful thing. And also getting to, like, play with Marissa, with, with, who's Nessa Rose, she's unbelievable, she's incredible. I can't wait for everyone to see her in this movie. But to like form that bond and that relationship, uh, it was so fun, and in, in the first movie it was so special and meaningful. And I, I'm really excited about the way that that develops and deepens. Oh, we cannot wait no. for part two. And um, you speak of community, and I think a question that I've been wanting to know from everybody today, and thinking ahead to the next film, is how has this experience changed you for good? In a million ways, I mean, to speak back to community, the people that I met making this, the people that, like, we became a family, you know, it was a really beautiful thing, but also to be a part of the Wicked Legacy as one of the, I don't know, hundreds of people who's played Bach and to be part of this family, it feels unbelievably special and just, like, feel the love from Wicked fans all over the world as we're coming out. It's just a really special thing. It's on film, it's forever, and it's you, Ethan Slater. That's, that's crazy to hear. Oh, it's real, it's really happening, man. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Great Thank Ethan you. Slater. I appreciate it. Taking on the role of Nessa Rose, Marissa Bodie. Welcome to the green carpet. It's happening, the Wicked European premiere. How excited are you to be back in the UK where you guys film this thing? I'm so excited. It feels so incredibly full circle. Uh, this Coming to the UK when we first started filming was my first time overseas in general. Um, and what a privilege. London's beautiful. Well, this is it. It's a lot of first two, because I know you, you pretty much left drama school, what, about three years ago. This is your debut film role. You're doing all right in life, I think. Apparently, yeah. I'm here. We out here. Yeah. Really? Can you talk to me about your audition process? Yeah. So it was over the span of a few weeks within a number of callbacks um, over a few weeks. Um, and then, like, I didn't hear back, so I thought it was donezo for me. Um, and then a few days later, after being sad, I get a call back. Um, and John had told me in the sweetest way and incorporated Ari and Cynthia that I had gotten the part, which was over, all over Zoom, 8 a.m. my time, because they were all in the UK already. Um, and then I was like, well, how am I supposed to just sit with myself now and not tell anybody for the rest of the day and for like a few more months? 
Okay, but who did you tell on the slide? Did you tell anybody? I told my parents immediately, um, and then I told a few of my closest friends. But it all worked out, and as you said, I mean, it's definitely the opposite of Dunzo. You slayed this part of uh, Nessa Rose. And also, you're making history. You are the first authentically disabled person to ever play this role since its inception. That must be so incredible to, to, have, to, to have this be part of your legacy. Yeah, absolutely. I think community is important in any sense. Um, and if one or two disabled people in general can feel a little bit less alone and feel a little bit more seen after seeing this film, then I will be so happy. Right on. Um, I saw um, the... I've had, I've had a chance to see the film. Obviously, no spoilers. But um, the girl, Cecily, who plays Younger You, she is incredible. How did you guys bond on, on, on set and off set? So adorable. Her family is incredible. Um, we're actually very close. They ironically live just down the street from my partner, and so we see each other often. Um, my partner occasionally helps homeschool her too, um, and she's just the sweetest. And her family is so kind and lovely, and genuinely, maybe one of my favorite parts about being on Wicked was meeting them because they are just the sweetest family ever. But that's it, this, this wicked experience, I mean, you can see it beaming from all of you. It really has been a, a family affair. Um, can you talk to me about, uh, in this moment, no pressure, your favorite sequence in this moment to film? Oh my goodness. There's a few different ones for sure. Okay. But dancing through life, going into the Ozdust, um, me and Ethan's big dance number is... The hands. The hands. Oh, you already know, them. girl, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but that was probably one of my favorite things to film, for sure. And the rehearsal for it and everything, it, it felt great, yeah. And my last question, um, how, I'm asking this to everybody, how has this film and this experience changed you for good? It's changed me in a lot of ways. I mean, filming was like six, seven months, so that's a lot of time and space to grow. Um, and just taking the humanity that I see in the characters and that were in the script and taking a little bit of those pieces with me as well. I think those have changed me for the better. Right on. Risa, thank you so very much. Thank you. And congratulations on being a 10-10 Nessalize. Thank you. Thank you so much. We <laughs> did it! Okay, so right guys, as we're speaking to Bo and Yang, who plays Fanny in uh, Wicked, we can see uh, Alex Alexia and we can see the our three best looking people. Exactly. In the whole Those production. three that you can see right there in the camera play Alphaba and Glinda and Fiero wow. in the UK production of Incredible. Wicked in the West End, oh, which we love. Fun. And now okay. we have Bo and Yang here wow. who's in Wicked the movie musical. Dude, oh. when you got the call to say, okay, I choose you from John Chu, what was the reaction? My reaction was it was 6 a.m. I was in North Carolina. I had just wrapped a night shoot of something, and I was like, this is a hallucination. This is not real. But then it was, and it was wild. And then, like, Ari and I started to talk about it, and then she and I were, like, strategizing on like, how to make it work, and I can't believe we're here. I can't believe we made it. Believe it. I mean, magic really is real. Yes. Um, now we need to get into this character. You and Bronwyn with Ariana, this trio, it's, it is hilarious. It's a toxic trio. But a toxic in a good way. Uh, really? Is there such a thing? I okay, Clara. I, okay. I'm, 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 I'm giving you guys a pass. Um, Thank you. Talk to me about the laughs that you had on set because the dialogue is hilarious. Too many. We had too many laughs. And like, John M. Chu made the grave error of letting me ad lib, letting me and Bronwyn ad lib <laughs> on this movie that's going to be seen by a million people. Why would you give us so much power? Now, without, um, a, without spoiling it, there's one ad lib that you do about something that you can't see, which makes me laugh. <laughs> and and it's in like the first three minutes of the movie. And we cannot wait for people to see that. <sighs> but also, let's talk about you, King of Korea. You're giving us a <gasps> strong, you're giving us some strong eight counts, Bo and Yang. Strong eight counts, thank you um, so much. Talk to me about your new life as a dancer. Well, um, <laughs> they deep faked me onto another person body. No, it was so fun. It was amazing. And our, our entire choreography team, Christopher Scott, everybody, um, Leah Hill, Comfort, Will Loftus, they were all incredible. And so like, they really deluded me into thinking that I was a dancer. So there you go. Well, let me say something. You are absolutely a dancer. You're an absolute an actor. And you're absolutely hilarious in this Thank film. You. And we cannot wait for people to see it. Bo and Yang, everybody. Thanks. Have a good night, everybody. <laughs> Taking on the role of Shen Shen, Bronwyn James, hello! Hi! <laughs> Sorry, that's just my mother screaming like a mad woman. And that's exactly the energy we want this evening. Big, oh, absolutely. Big mum energy, big theatre kid energy, big wicked energy. All right, absolutely. now take me back to your journey with Wicked, because I heard a rumour that you've seen this, the, the stage play at least seven times. I've seen it seven times. It's going to be eight in a minute. It's going back on tour to Bradford in a minute. Um, <laughs> 
that this this musical, like, oh my gosh, it's, sorry, it's someone that I went to school with, you're all right. There we go. It's a family affair, you're all right. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it is such an incredible musical. I mean, there's a reason it's lasted 20 years and that I've seen it seven times and I'm obsessed. Um, and that reason is? It's, the songs are incredible. The costumes are incredible. The, the through line of the morals and the story and all these characters finding themselves is incredible and Wicked is incredible. It is truly is incredible. Now talk to me about this character, Shen Shen, and just the audition process and, and the day that you found out you got the role. Oh my gosh. So the audition process, I mean, casting were not messing around when it came to finding the correct people for the parts. I had like six or seven auditions, um, like ranging from like self tips, to like singing auditions to dancing auditions, which was interesting. Um, <laughs> And it We've was, seen you in Bowen, you've got the moves. I mean, I've got the moves. I mean, I had a lot of help. <laughs> Maybe a bit too much help. Um, but yeah, it was... Uh, the whole process of this was incredible. And finding out that... Because I'd have been happy, like, running the coffees on set or doing the lighting or something. Like, to actually be involved in it as a character was just an absolutely life-changing experience. Well, we could feel your joy just beaming off of the screen. And uh, look, you said you'd, you'd happily run coffee, but you didn't run coffee. You are side by side I with know. Bowen and with Ariana. Talk to me about just you three's dynamic um, on set. Oh my gosh, I have got such a special place in my heart for Ariana and for Bowen. They, when, when you think about what your dream kind of scene partners are, you pray that you get someone like Ariana and Bowen. They were not only incredibly fun and funny in the scenes, but there's people that were so generous with their acting and like um, kind behind the scenes and just really amazing people and as talented as they are kind as well. And essentially that is the, the essence of Wicked. And last but not least, got to ask everybody, how has this film and this experience changed you for good? Oh my gosh, it, I mean, this is a job and a, a film that will stay with me for the rest of my career and my life. And I, have, I cannot say anything but positive things about being part of Wicked. Right on, Bronwyn James, AKA Shen Shen for life, legacy on film. Thank you so much. <laughs>